that's not it. Neither is that. In this episode, let's talk about the tanker buoy. What the heck is it? So what am I talking about when I say the tanker buoy? And why are these two knives relevant? These two knives are what inspired the tanker buoy along with some other design philosophies based on space being at a premium as it would be in a tank. This right here is the tanker buoy. All right, thank you for joining me again on the channel today. Uh, and also thank you for your patience with the last video I put out about the modern combat buoy. Um, trying to, you know, get my rhythm back in, in front of a camera again is, is a little hard after a month or so from not doing it and just, you know, being kind of out of touch with everybody for a while or out of touch with reality and society and not really wanting to play the game recently uh, due to family loss. This is just a quick tabletop discussion today on the tanker buoy, what I call my tanker buoy. It's a, it's a knife in my line that I've added this year, um, recently designed. It is, and I'm going to try very hard not to say iconic or derivation or any of those normal words that normally say so frequently and too much. Uh, I'm going to try really hard not to say that. So the tanker buoy is inspired largely by the need for a duty knife or a combat knife where space may be at a premium. So it's kind of a minimalistic design that still has some of the characteristics and attributes of a fighting knife or a buoy. It was inspired by a buoy. That's why I call it the tanker buoy. It's really not a buoy blade as much as it is a tonto blade with a clipped point. Um, so it's kind of an amalgamation of two of my favorite blade styles, the buoy and the tonto. And I need to wipe that off of there because that's dirty. This one still needs a little bit of cleanup before I put it in the shop. I got to finish the sheath and everything. It will be in the shop before too long, but this is the first time I've had one of these on hand um, long enough to make a video for, you know, for more than a couple days after I finish it because um, they usually go very quickly. They're very popular um, and they are actually the first ones that went off my table at Blade Show too. So to me, it, it's a very practical and simplistic design. If you think about um, the, the, a lot of the aspects of military life, um, gear and space are at a premium, you know, like weight and all that stuff is, is at a premium, especially in something like the inside of a tank. If you've ever been inside a tank, which I've been in a few, just um, not in a, in a professional military sense, like actually operating in them or anything. But I, I have spent some time in APCs, um, the old um, tracked APCs. We got qualifications on them when I first went in the military in the 90s. They were still using them, kind of old tech. Um, so they're similar in, in essence to a tank. They're basically just troop carriers for, you know, getting, we had 60s on top, M60s and Mark 19s, we get them up there too. So it's similar to a tank, but it's really made for deploying troops into combat and that kind of stuff. So inside a vehicle like that, or inside most military vehicles, like the Humvees and stuff like that, space is always at a premium. And the longer you carry battle gear, um, when you got your sappy plates on or your flak vest and your, your, you know, your ammo vests and ammo pouches and web gear and all that stuff, the more you realize that large knives like this um, become a lot less practical. Now, this is the EK Commando. I think it's their, their buoy model, uh, what they call the buoy. It's not the dagger version. But they, they become a little less practical and like the large bayonets and stuff like that become a lot less practical as time goes on and as you're in these kind of battle environments or these, you know, um, kind of restrictive environments where you, where you, where you don't have much room for gear and maneuvering and movement and stuff like that. So you start to parse down your gear as it goes on. You know, when you first go in the military, you're all excited. You want all the gear you can carry, you put, you know, knives everywhere. And, you know, um, you got your primary sidearm or your primary firearm, which was, which was the M16A2 when I first went in and the M9, um, Beretta. And you got that going on, plus all your ammo for that. And if you're a saw gunner or you're a, or a 60 gunner or you're an AG assistant gunner, you got extra bags and extra ammo and belts and all kinds of stuff going for those too. So you're carrying a lot of crap. And so things that are superfluous to your duty use really start to get stripped down. Moving forward in time, um, after my 10 years of experience in the military and just my personal preferences and experiences as a knife maker since then, um, I started kind of 
you know, moving things down the line in size. And this, it to me, is what I would call probably, it's 10 inches overall, so a five inch blade and a five inch handle. Probably something I would say is, is about the most useful size for a combat knife um, or a duty knife that I can think of. Because it, 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 it still allows you a little bit of size and robust uh, characteristics for hard use like if you need to pry stuff or you know you're you know even chopping stuff and that kind of thing you still have enough weight and you still have enough um, girth with this thing to actually ap apply it to some pretty heavy-duty tasks but it's small enough to be kind of relatively unobtrusive on the gear even so much to the point of carrying it right here um, which I did carry a knife right there on my gear for a few years um, and I can't remember which one it was. I think I strapped one of my old bayonets up there first, and that just did not work. It was way too big. Um, and then I ended up with, um, what did I end up with there? Something else. It was probably a, a seal tack, SOG seal tack, or something along those lines, you know. Very common knife that we used back in the late 90s, early 2000s. Um, so it was a smaller knife, nine, nine to ten inch long, and this realistically would fit that role. I mean, you could put it on your gear up here, which is kind of one of the last places you really want to put a knife, but um, it looks cool. So why not? You know, and if you ever have to get into hand-to-hand -hand with anybody, you've got it right there available. Let's be realistic. Hand-to-hand -hand combat is almost non-existent. Um, there are very few guys in the world today that have actually engaged in any hand-to-hand -hand combat with a knife, and probably even fewer still going forward as technology advances and we become more detached and disassociated from actual combat. Um, you know, it's just the nature of how it is these days. So that's not the most applied design aesthetic to this as a fighter. That's not really the most applied intent of design behind this one. Um, it has a clipped Tonto style blade, so it's kind of a fusion blade. Tonto-esque, clipped like a buoy has that Americana to it. Um, full tang, tapered, so another kind of attribute that I think is really super important for duty knives, hard use knives, um, heavy use knives, whatever you want to call it. I think it clipped, I mean sorry, a tapered tang is, and a full tang, full tang being the strongest aspect, or the strong, I said aspect, crap, I wasn't going to say that one either, sorry. Um, Full tangs being the one of the more useful characteristics in a heavy duty knife, tapered because it just looks nice, with a guard. It's got an inner, you know, an actual split guard integrated into the design, so you have a little bit of extra protection for your hand. Um, I use stainless steel guards and they're peened and pinned on, and I use Corby rivets and a stainless tube. So all the hardware on this thing is going to be very long wearing and long lasting. Now, going into some of the more refined parts of the debate of what makes a good knife for bushcraft or duty or whatever there's kind of some categorical differences in a bushcraft knife to a duty knife a duty knife needs to be robust it needs to be thick you know thick material i think um, but you can also with the tougher steels this is cpm 154 it's one of the tougher steels out there um, it offers some stainless characteristics but the hollow grind on a thicker blade actually produces a really really stout blade while giving you the benefit of a thinner edge for more refined um, and more detailed cutting tasks or or more the ability to take a little bit more sharp of an edge let's put it that way versus something that is like convex ground with a convex edge they're a little chunkier um, they're great for splitting wood and it's very specific bushcraft tasks but convex knives overall are not as useful in some cutting tasks or general cutting tasks as hollow grinds and flat grinds to me um, the drawback to hollow grinds being that yes some of your edge stability is not going to be as high as um it would be on a convex or even a flat. Um, but they're easy to sharpen. Um, they take and hold a very keen edge. And as you sharpen, you don't lose that keenness of edge when you're sharpening back because you're sharpening back into that hollow. And you have a lot of years worth of grinding on this thing and going back and sharpening before you actually get into thick enough blade to where it starts to widen your edge geometry to the point of being too obtuse or unuseful. So that to me, the tanker buoy is just sim as simple as I can get it, a broken down, simplified, stripped down to its basic elements, duty knife that fits on the pack, in the pack, in the pocket even, um, on the belt, uh, relatively easy in most scenarios. 
unobtrusively without taking up too much space and without getting in the way, really. You don't want your gear getting in the way of what your mission is. That's really what it boils down to. Your gear should not get in the way of your mission, of accomplishing your mission or your goal while you're out and about doing things, whether it's just self-defense, um, daily carry, duty, law enforcement duty, or um, you know, military duty or field duties like uh, hunting and fishing and hiking and backpacking and camping and all that good stuff. So this design, the, the, uh, the old tankaroo here, is really quickly becoming one of my more favorite designs. This one is in rustic brown canvas micarta. It's a newer flavor of micarta offered by Maze Craft Supply out there, and I've been playing around with it, and I really like it. It's got some antique elements to it. It's got some kind of uh, that vintage look without being like the um, the natural micarta. It has more of a yellowish tint to it, which is also pretty. I like that stuff too. I call it pumpkin spice micarta. Um, so the, it works really well for this type of design. It kind of has a vintage element and look to it. I like black and OD green as well. This buoy also though works as not just a um, full tank with a split guard this style which is kind of what we'll call the loveless style of building things going forward or he didn't invent the style but he kind of perfected it and popularized it um, back in the 60s 70s 80s that kind of time but I actually did this one as a hidden tang with an iron wood handle and a bronze guard as well which I'll put the picture up here and that was a beautiful knife that one actually worked really well so I was trying it in both directions like you know has a more traditional build style like a buoy would be like a vest buoy because it's only got a five inch blade it's not like a big honking nine inch or anything but like a vest buoy or a gambler's buoy um, so i tried it with the hidden tang and it worked out really well it actually turned out to be a really great looking knife and but i originally designed it as a full tang with a split guard so it works both ways i could actually do a lot with that blade style um the blade style itself there's a lot i can do with that um it's kind of more spear point than drop belly you see how the clip actually comes back pretty far on this one and i thought about on the recommendation of a good friend of mine who i served with in the military he he brought up why not try to raise the clip on this one in a design and see how it looks so i'm going to make one of those um in the next couple months or a couple weeks and put that up on the website and see how it looks i just want to kind of play around with the design and maybe so this will be the mark one version so this is the tanker mark one and the raised clip version we'll call Mark II. Just makes sense. That's what we do going forward. If you have any more questions about this type of knife or what is in my catalog and how I um, run my drops, because I'm gonna be doing a lot more batch drops in the, in the next in the near future or going forward in business, I'm gonna try to start scheduling more batches and shows. I'm gonna put my show schedule out there on my website. Um, for now, I'll be in Nashville at the Nashville Custom Knife Show in November. I will be at Blade, Texas next March, and I will be at Blade Show in Atlanta in next June. So that's what I have on the schedule for shows right now. Um, I will be bringing batches of knives with me to the shows, obviously for sale, but I'm also in between those shows, I'm going to be doing quarterly batch drops through my website. So you have to sign up through my website, CalebWhiteKnives.com, get on the email list, and you will be notified when knives like this become available. Um, and I'll put them out along with whatever else I have going on at the time um, available soon. The, the, I'm going to do a batch drop in the middle of September. Look at my schedule. Yeah, middle of September I'm planning on doing a batch drop. Middle to end of September, depending on how knives quickly I get the knives done. And I usually run about three to five knives per batch. Maybe sometimes a little more. If I'm doing knives like this, this style, they take a lot longer time to build. Um, like this in the Model 1 do, so they will be um, probably less in the batch. But I find that's a good business model, or it's been a good model working for me going forward, and it's going to kind of help streamline getting some of my knives out to more people. Um, and, you know, because Instagram and places like that are not really super reliable anymore. So um, they were great for a few years, but they're really not that reliable anymore for getting information out to new people or to existing customers. So sign up on my website, calebwhitenives.com. And uh, oh, quick comparison. Here's my personal, this is my Model 1. It's starting to get some mileage on it. So this is the comparison between the two size-wise. So the Model 1 is a little on the bigger side, so it's what I would call bigger um, sort of combat buoy. And I kind of discussed that a lot in the last video. On the bigger size, I like it. I like carrying it, but it's kind of an open carry out in the open type of thing um, and a duty or specific use carry type of thing. 
So it works in the field really great. It's actually, I mean, I wore this around for a couple weeks um, during blade show and afterwards, just every day, everywhere I went, and it really did not attract much attention. But this is just a little bit smaller and a little bit more uh, simplified in its design for a little bit different aesthetic. So thank you for joining me again on this tabletop of my catalog knife discussion. I hope that I can uh, serve some of you out there soon with a, with a shiny sharp blade. And if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. Write me an email, calebwhiteknives.com. You can find me on Instagram at Caleb White Knives and on X at C White Knives. And I think I still have a Facebook page out there, but I got kicked off Facebook personally. So I think my wife still runs it. She does run it, but I don't, I don't, I, she'll answer you or direct you to the website if you go on Facebook. And I think it is at Caleb White Knives on Facebook. I think, I don't know, I'm not even actually 100% sure. So there's that. Anyway, thank you for joining me again. Y'all have a blessed week.